G'day, I'm Steve. Welcome to Woodworking Masterclass. This is a workshop where we mis make mistakes. I can't even say it right, can I? Where we make mistakes on a daily basis. Um, I thought, I was down here doing some repairs and I thought, I might as well stream it because everyone loves a failure. Um, those of you that have been following me for a while know and I've sort of made a bit of a transition from making the fine furniture to specialise in making harps for the moment. And I've just started, uh, I've made a couple, and I purposely made them slightly different ways to see how they'd perform. This was the one I was using, and it developed a bit of a, um, a, a bend this way with the tension. There's about four, 900 kilos of tension on the strings on this side and it was pulling it over. This timber is jarrow, which is really, really hard, but it actually started to curl the neck. I did have a dowel up it, so I thought, well, that doesn't work, so I came back down here, had a bit of a play, released the tension, neck went back nearly to where it was, wasn't quite there, so I put it in the vise and gave it a bit of a nudge and broke it. So I thought, okay, that's not going to work. Uh, there's another one that I've finished called Black Lightning, which I'm playing at the moment. It's up in the house, and what I did, actually cut a trench inside there and put about a 200 mil piece of 20 by 10 mil uh, mild steel plate. And at the moment, but it does add a bit of weight and it's a bit clumsy. So what I've decided to do to fix this one is a carbon fibre rod. This little, well, where are we? There you go. Carbon fibre rod, they generally come in 500 or 600 mil lengths. So this one I'm fixing because it's broken. And then I thought what I'll do, so to prevent the same thing happening in the other harps that I'm making, but unfortunately a little bit further down the track with them than I'd like to be, so what I've got to do now is long line bore into here, which I shall show you, and I've got to bore down to about there, about 250 mil or thereabouts, and then put in this bit, cut it, and then I've got another one over there to do. So I thought I'd share that with you. Uh, I've got some brass work to work to do on this 10th century inspired Irish harp, and even with that, I was drilling the, the holes the other day and everything was going really, really well like that until that happened. So I've got to make, I've got to make new um, brass cheek plates and I've got a string board over there to go on to the Irish one that I've got to uh, do as well. A little hint, I'll get into the chat in a minute, a little hint with that. If you're grinding brass, where is it? I don't know where I'll put it. Uh, it's, yeah, I'll get it later. Anyway, I thought I'll grind it. So I was grinding away, but um, so used to working with timber and using saws. Timber doesn't get, oh, there it is in front of me. There you go. This piece of brass here, I was grinding down the side, picked it up like that, and burnt my fingers. So note to self, remember, metal gets hot. Oh, dear. So yeah, look, it's been a great week. And as you can tell, the shed, well, the, the shed actually is tidy. I'll give you a little bit of a, whoops, wrong camera, there we go. Look at that. I, look, that, that bench is tidy. Even the floor's tidy. And the saws over there are tidy. Mind you, it took me three, three days to do it. I got to the stage where I just could not walk anywhere without tripping over. And I thought, I've got to take some time off and, whoops, tidy the shed. And it was an interesting thing. While I was doing that, I was getting the chat up, I was rude. An interesting thing occurred to me while I was tidying up. No, go on, I don't want to listen to you. I don't know what she's going off about. Give me my channel. How do you get onto your own channel? Hang on, wait a minute. There I am. Um, 
I should be live according to that I am. Do do boom boom. And if I bring that up and then put up with these ads. Won't be a tick, but if you can wait until these ads disappear. There we go. Good day, Louise. Good day, Andy. Good day, Jared. What have we got? Hi Steve. Good morning. Internet. Yeah, I know. It's, it's sad, Andy. Well, we did we did have a little bit of success when I had a rant over it, but I think it could have been uh, classified as coincidence. Uh, dear. Um, talking about failures, yeah. Oh, no, no. When I was tied in the shed up, you know, it occurred to me, I love making. I don't know what I'm making, but I've got to be creating something, doing something. Everything is in my bag. No, I'd love to have a tidy workshop all the time. It's not my thing. My dad, Louise, will attest to it. It's a mess. But it's not my bag to keep it tidy. So someone can tidy it when I've gone. But while ever I'm here breathing on this side of the dirt, I want to be making stuff. That said, let's get it. Where's, where's the coffee? Oh. Yeah, so when, that, um, when this heart broke, Oh, no, no, not when it broke. When it started to bend, I've got to tell you, I was a little disappointed, but I wasn't upset because I hadn't sold it and it's a problem I can fix. I would have been upset had I sold it and then it had happened. But doing this, I said to someone the other day, look, I might make harps for a year before I actually sell one and that could be 30 harps. And I'm quite happy with that. I'll give them away. Um, uh, yeah, everyone at Christmas is getting a harp, uh, but when it comes to selling them, I'll know that I've got everything covered. So, first of all, I'll bore these out, then we'll mix up a great big stack. Oh, there was something else I found too. Metal, metal, gluing brass on the timber. Epoxy doesn't work. I glued, was it this one? No, no, it was something else. I glued um, the epoxy, used epoxy, on timber and metal and left it for 24 hours, took the clamp and the metal peeled off. So, what I found with this, you've got to have a polyurethane glue and, oh, the one I've um, played with is, is that stuff. I just bought a little bottle to see if it would work and I've got to tell you, it's good. Don't get the Gorilla Wood glue, it won't work, but this is this is clear so it doesn't leave any um, stain or, or colour. The other one I think is just like a normal dark glue, uh, hide glue or whatever. But yeah, this works well and you don't need much. What you do do, which surprised me, and I did it and it works absolutely extremely well, you're gluing it onto a glass surface or metal or something that's non porous, you have to wet one of the surfaces. Don't know why, but and where's Johnson guitar slide. Where is it? I don't know. But um, when Justin was over here a few years ago, he gave me one of his Rocky Mountain slides and unfortunately it rolled off uh, the surface it was on and hit the ground and broke into three pieces and it's ceramic or pottery, and um, I don't know where it is now. And that Gorilla Glue to put it back together, and it is gorgeous. You, if, you, if you look, yeah, you can tell where the, the join is, but no, I've got no complaints at all. It's, it's really good. So there you go. All right, um, I'm going to bore this one down. Uh, we, we, yeah! Yeah, apparently, Andy, the floor was there, but I just wasn't aware of it. Okay, so I've got myself a little drill here. Is it? <laughs> Anyone want a filling done? I'm happy to oblige. And what I'm doing is boring down here. Now, to start this hole off, like this, forget it. It's not going to happen. You're going to ruin your job, and it's going to be haywire. So what I actually did... Okay, I've got a horizontal boring machine, but even if you've got a drill press or a wood lathe, start with a brad point bit and go down 
as far as you possibly can with the drill. So I used just a normal 3.8 um, drill and went down, I don't know, whatever the length of the drill was. What that does, it gives me a guide that I can now push this through on. Um, and i just got to measure it to see how far we're going to go. If I go down nine inches, that's 225. That's the end of that. Oh dear, what are we going? 225. Okay, so I'm going to go nearly the full length of this drill. And slow speed. Don't try high speed. Notice as I'm going in, I'm going in slowly and I'll be clearing quite regularly. So going in, push a bit. Go back in again. An electric drill might be a bit better. But we'll see. What I don't want, and it has a possibility, I don't want this to come out the side. If it does, we'll fix it, but I'm hoping it won't. They clear the lands, and if you've got a bit of compressed there, air there, just blow it out. Didn't look good. I just had some air come out the side, so I'm just hoping. Well, we'll find out, won't we? I might have clipped this one here. Ah, that's all right, we'll work it out. I might have just clipped one of those. Oh, it's going to be tight now. I've got to get it out. <clears throat> oh, we might be all right. I don't know. It's one of I might have clipped one of these pinholes. for the tuning pin. So what I might do is I'll slide that down when I actually drill that hole and we should be should be okay on that I think. Because what I actually want to do is when I'm building them I can drill these holes separately and then line them up then put it together but I've already preempted this so I, I can't really. We'll work it out. It's 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 not the end of the world. They still they still plant trees. They tell me. What have we got? Uh, G'day, mate. I knew a guy who'd made casting steering wheels for classic cars, and he used Gorilla Go for his compound veneer. Um, yeah, look, it it would work. It really will. In the old days, they used to use fish glue, but that I don't know. That's what I don't have here. I've got hot glue. I've got rabbit glue, PVA, um, all the other ones. But yeah, I don't have any fish glue. But apparently fish glue they use in boil work 
B-O-U-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, I think, after the French chap who uh, developed it. And what he used to do, he'd use metal, stone, shell and timber and use fish glue and it, it uh, expands and contracts at a different rate, so it's good. So right, that one's done. Oh. Let's have a crack at this one. Same, same. This is slightly... Yeah, this is a different sort of setup, but this has been veneered. Same thing. I ran a brad point bit down here first. It's nerve-wracking, it really is. But that's all, all part of it. But you can't make omelets without breaking eggs. And you can't learn new things unless you stuff old things up. Those of you who were watching a previous stream, I was going to veneer this part. Then the next day I realised I'm better off to drill this first. That other one I did, veneered. I might pull that veneer off or I might just put um, a bit of parquetry in or something. Okay. Now, we'll get the depth of this one. There's a kebab stick. Could be one here somewhere. There you go. I love it when you go to where you is and it's there. Really. All right, so that's to there. So that's, oh, oh. Poke, myself, poke myself in the nose with it. There you go. So this is to there. So that means that's going down to there. So that, and you won't bend this stuff. I'm really, this is hollow, by the way. So you can, well, if it wasn't, oh, it's gone. I was going to say it was if you didn't have a, a wasp nest in it. But you can bend that as much as you like and... It's not going to bend. I've uh, ordered some solid ones, which will be even stronger. So really, if I push that all the way home. Okay, that's down to there, which means that neck will not go anywhere. If I was concerned, I could put two in there, but these are only 22 strings, so it should be okay. And we will. It's weird stuff, this. Um, you can't bend it. Very, very hard to cut on um, a bandsaw. Makes a horrible smell. You don't want to breathe the stuff in. But you can cut it with a hacksaw really easily. So that's what I'm going to do. But if you put it, using a lot of butts today, aren't I? 
if you put it in the vice as I did with the first bed, uh, I had it in one of the holes that I, no, that I, instead of putting, as you notice, I put the, the harp in the vice and then pulled it out. Because earlier on in the week, I actually put the stick in the vice, tightened it up and crushed it, and it just, it broke because it, it's got no strength, but it does bending wise. So, yeah, it's just been a huge learning curve this week. What can I tell you? So we'll cut that one first. Then that one can be that one. You can sit there. Oh, and the stuff I found, Andy. It was good. I didn't have to buy a lot of stuff because I already I didn't really have it. So I'm going to gently put that in there. No, no big pressure. Just going to hold that. Get the little axle out, little junior axle, and what are we on? There you go. And just cut that. Bada boom. Bada -da. Don't try. Yeah, this is metal tube or PVC or something like that. You cut that far and you just bend it back to break it. Don't be tempted because you can split the fibres. Okay, so that's that one there. Where's the other one? Measure up how much we've got to rip off of this one. Oh. That's it, okay. <whistles> ah, now, now I can't get anything out. There we go. So that one, I'll hold that there, that goes down into there. Think that will be good enough too. Whoop, don't know if you noticed that, but I. I caught it and it had just nicked it and it started to split down there. That's not an issue because I'll put this in the bottom half providing this part strong. We should have dodged a bullet. So I'll put it there. Oh. And if it doesn't, well, I've learnt. Okie dokie. Where are we? Oh, couldn't see for looking. Just put my G6s away. We'll give George another plug. These, these are absolutely brilliant. I really don't know if they're on the market yet, but the new G6 Wi-Fi iMuffs. These were the original. Where's my original ones? These were the original ones. Uh, the iMuffs, and then they bought them. G6 out and now the G6 wireless. So there you go. I was talking to George during the week. I said, mate, I love them. So I, I love listening to um, books on tape because I, I do read some things um, and I, I, I sit down, I forgot, if I'm at home, I can't sit down and just read because, oh, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. If I'm away, week I'm going to the beach with one of my sons and granddaughter and I, I'm not a big beach person nowadays, I used to be but not anymore. So I'm just taking a couple of books and I'll and watch them 
can get wet and enjoy themselves. And um, I can, well, I want to find me a blinking chat again. Where is it? Oh, there we go. And uh, I can read. So books on tape, for me, are absolutely fantastic because I can listen to the stories. I, I don't have a great repertoire. I've, I've, I like more so the readers than the, the story. There are certain authors I like, but if it's a, a, you know, a reader with a grity, grindy, whiny, whingy voice, I can't abide it. Whereas if the story, yeah, it's a bit of your gum, but it's a good reader, it's okay, I'll listen to it. Right, now, let's make a big mess of this. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what I should do here, whether I should... Is Gorilla Glue or... Uh, What's it good for? Mm. <whistles> Doesn't it's used for, does it? Timber, but I could. I'll have a go with this one, and uh, yeah, we'll see. Oh. Well, I'll look it up. Hang on, wait a minute. I'll just go over here, and you, you can watch me looking it up. I'll just, oh, I just want to find out. Best glue for carbon fibre. I know in guitars they use epoxy. Resin coated epoxy, epoxy. Alternative adhesive, that, that bit of our bum. Uh, best adhesive carbon fiber. Epoxy. Yep, no, that's it. That epoxy is the go. So that's what we'll use. It's good. It's good. Handy having the internet there, isn't it? Now, where's a piece of scrap? Oh. Look. And a couple of paddle pop sticks. Always got to have lollipop sticks in your, in your workshop. They, they come in so handy for so many different jobs. Now I'm going to make a big wadge of this up, because I can. Boston! G'day mate, welcome to the workshop. Thanks for popping in and good day to you too, sir. And Vince! <laughs> Night, nice of you watch me when you're not at work too, mate. It's good. <laughs> uh, dear. Okay, I'm going to make a big mess of this up. We'll see how we go. Um, yeah, this being hollow rod too. I'll make a lot more because I don't care if it goes up the middle of the rod. So I leave a paddle pop stick in there. Where are we? You have to dish that one out. Don't get them mixed up. That's, uh, what's that? That's number one, part A. This is part B. And same, same. Got a paddle pop stick in there. And then I've got a clip here to mix uh, this stuff's pretty forgiving. You sort of do it by eye and you think, yeah, that's pretty close. And it works out pretty okay. There you go, that'll do. Oh, I might have to go down the coast and buy some more soon. Don't know. Uh, dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. Jim, how are you? Oh, oh, I'm there. G'day, Jim, how are you? Spring has sprung. The grass is riz. Wonder where the bird is. 
That's the, that's the extent of the poetry. The Valdi wrote for seasons. I have one little poem. So whether that makes me not as good as Valdi, I don't know. Welcome aboard, Jim. Mate, you made a post the other day and I was going to make a comment to you about it. I forgot what it was, but it was a ripper. I really enjoyed it. Uh, what else we got there? Woodworker hide. The maker, good day, mate, Mark, how are you? I've got, to, I've got to remember to look at the camera because it's rude otherwise. Good day, Mark, how are you, mate? Uh, oh, you're in the workshop, Vince. You're in the place where you'd prefer to be working. All right, now, here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh. I'm going to get one of these. We'll see if we can... Well, hang on. Whoa! Before I get all carried away, with me big clamp gone? Big clamp. I think that's it. Oh, dear. I hope it's it, because if not, I don't know where the other one is. Let me... Oh. Have a look see. Is that... That's not the one I want. I want the bigger. See what happens, Andy? You tidy up the workshop and you can't find anything. Here we go. I got him. Oh, I got him good. There we go. So I've got to clamp this one. The other two I don't have to clamp because I'll just shove it down there. All right. Which camera's got a good view of that? Well, that one's stupid because you're looking at the thing. You don't want to look at that. But we can do this, and then you can watch it there. La -da -da -ding, da -da -da -dum. Okay. There you go. There's, there's, there's some knowledge that you can use in Trivial Pursuit. If you've got an ice cream stick or a paddle pop stick, as we like to call them here in all Australia, they fit nicely down a three gate or ten pole. What I'm doing, I'm just jamming as much down there as I can because when I poke the carbon rod down there, the overage will go up in the middle. And fill it up, I'm hoping. Ugh. <laughs> that sounds disgusting, doesn't it? Oh dear. Here we go. All right. So that one can go there. I'll put it over there for a tick. Good thing about epoxy too, it doesn't run. So you can do what I just did and it doesn't run out and go everywhere. Oh dear. Well, make sure, Vince, you concentrate on what you're doing and don't have a weak mind of fixing up mistakes. Oh, it's good though, isn't it? Isn't it nice to be out of potter? I love it. I was talking to my sister the other day, and it's, it's a bit of a standard joke. She's five years older than I am, but she calls me her older brother, so I don't know. Um, but you know how, especially for people of our vintage, you sort of think, crikey, I'm nearly 70 or mid-60s, but I don't feel that old. Um... And she was saying, yeah, she only feels as if she's 40-ish. Uh, and she said, how do you feel? And I said, well, actually, I'm really happy being the age I am. A lot of people haven't got there. And it's just so nice. So yesterday, Sue and I went out. 
um, do some shopping, get some stuff for the chooks and what have you. And when I came home, I was absolutely knackered. I said, oh, I'm just going to lie down. And it was so nice just to be able to lie down because I didn't have to get up and do anything if I didn't want to. Okay, so that's getting a bit sticky, so we'll take that one off. And I think I laid down at 2 o'clock, got off the bed about 5, and came down here till 7. So it was very nice. Does mm. anyone watch that new show on Stan called Poker Face? Not to be confused with Russell Crowe's newest sort of film called Poker Face. Now, it's, it's quite different. They show you the crime and then they take you back before the crime and then the girl, I guess, is Poker Face. She solves the crime. It's, it's different, but it's it's not different. It's just different. Okay, so this one's going to be a real challenge to glue up, I think. Don't know how I'm going to do it, so you can watch me blunder about as I try and work it out. There you go. I know, I don't use that camera very often. Do oh, that was the other thing. I... Um, Change the camera tripod around. So, if you're thinking that camera over there that you're on at the moment is a bit higher than it was, it is because it's got a different tripod on it. Okay. So that can go there, that can go there. That can go there. And um, we'll see if we can. Button that down a bit. Ah, yeah. Whoa. This is going to be one of those days. Oh, oh there's a great, great one on Facey the other day. Oh, no, it was this morning. And, so, and it was obviously in the 70s. And some were replacing a motor in a car. And they had. Placing motors in cars is very educational for young people because they learn all the new swear words that they didn't learn at school. Oh dear! Oh, I can relate to that. Oh. This is where, as I said, I really don't like people helping me in the workshop, but something like this is maybe when it would be really handy just to have that extra pair of hands. Ah! Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, there's some tape over there. But if you haven't got the extra pair of hands, you have to become creative, which is what I'm going to do here. I'm actually going to tape. one under the bottom so it can hold there what's what I'm doing what do I want to do there we go can go there can go there it's all good <sighs> yeah that could work That could work. Isn't tape wonderful? Here we go. Feels pretty.
pretty darn good actually. Golly! Tell you what, I think you got to be happy with that. Yeah, if I can just pull it down a little. Ah! It's always that last turn, isn't it? I was just about to say. Remember, Theo used to say it's the last cut that does it. Well, it's the last turn that does it. That's whacked it out of alignment there. It's all right. We can fix it. <laughs> Is my tongue hanging out? Here we go. That's feeling pretty good. I know I'm tempting fate. But what's the point of having fate unless you're tempted? <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Oh, I love doing this stuff live. <laughs> I think it's the masochist in me. But the other side of the coin is people could be watching that go and say, look, this silly old bloke, he can do it. Well, I'm smarter than he is, so I reckon I can do it. And if I do that and as a result, I feel quite happy that I have done a good job. If I've inspired someone to have a go. Gee whiz, that is so, so close. Oh! Okay, I'm going I'm to go and I'm going to... Oh, really tempt fate now. So I can brace this side, I'm going to put, if I can find the blinking things, oh dear, I'm going to put this brass plate on and hopefully that will bring it into alignment. Or, alternatively, he's going to fall together again from the Okay, here we go. <laughs> Ready. I'm going to put this plate on here. This is where it's meant to go. Look at that, shocking. Ah, oh, the pressure of it all. I've got to tell you, I'm, I'm thinking I'll do a good job on that.
La da da da. Do 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 do. Wonky old screw that one. to knock that in with a hammer but I'm really not comfortable enough to do that so I'm just going to leave that as is don't tempt fate any more than I have and yes you will see that there has been a break there but I think when all said and done I think I've dodged a bullet. Now the challenge is to take this out and go and put it somewhere for 24 hours so the clamp doesn't fall off. And I think the best place for that is here. So I've got a nasty feeling that if I put that clamp on the ground, it's going to spring off. No, I think that's, that's all right. I think we dodged a bullet on that one. Oh, oh dear. Pressure. Uh, what are we getting at? Oh, g'day, mate. How are you? Good to have you back in the shop. A tidy shed you should be able to find. <laughs> mate, the amount of stuff that I found when I was tidying it, but then the amount of stuff I can't find because it is tidy. Oh, the conundrum. Uh, okay, so that it, it says on the epoxy leave for 24 hours, that particular job and these other ones I'm doing, I'm going to leave for 48 hours before I touch them to make sure that it's thoroughly, absolutely, definitely dry. All right, let's grab the next one, which is this one and that one. And... These, these ones should be easier because there's, I don't have to hold pieces together. I just jam stuff down there. Mm. Oh. Oh, oh, I'll see if I can find some skinnier bits of stuff. A yeah, good clamp, that one, first class. Definitely a good clamp. Brenda, g'day, how are you? I have seen the epoxy paste before. Looks like it would be easier to use than liquid. Yeah, the thing I like about it when you do that, it doesn't drip over your bench. And you've got a great amount of open work time with it. Um, I don't know, half an hour, 40 minutes, something like that. So. But I don't know if you've got the earlier stuff, don't try and glue metal to timber with it because it's not that good at doing that. It looks nice, but then the metal comes off and you've got a really nice shiny surface underneath. Oh, I know what I want. <clears throat> uh, dee 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 dee. Oop, look at that. That will do just absolutely fine. Poke this. Isn't it great when you've got bits of rubbish around the place? You can use for other stuff. So, so I've got some um, long lengths of three quarter, uh, three eighths inch dowel, but unfortunately, if I put that in, it's not going to get down the bottom because it's the width of the hole. So, what I want to do with this is shove glue. Ugh. right down to the bottom of the hole that I've drilled. 
I thought I did way too much, but I don't think I did. Oh, I lost a chicken the other day, very sad. She was walking around in the evening when I went to lock them up and she really didn't look that clever. And um, yeah, I went down in the morning to let him out and the poor thing was dead. <clears throat> so I don't know, it might have been by a snake or something. Happens. Not that I've seen snakes. I haven't seen any snakes for a couple of years, actually. We used to get a <laughs> Bob used to catch them. Big browns and yellow belly blacks. Uh, a good snake catcher, that dog. Okay, this is looking good. Uh, <coughs> what have we got? Trevor, good day, mate. Oh, good day, Trev. What have we got? Here you go, Steve. The night was dark, the storm in the toilet light was dim. I heard the scream, then a splash. Oh my God. <laughs> Are you in the corner? Because you deserve to be. Oh, I like this. <laughs> Something odd therapeutic about doing this. It, it was funny because when I got the, the bend in that one I've just fixed, I thought, no, I'll persevere with these because I want to know if they're going to bend. And then I thought, why mess around? For the sake of a couple of dollars, I can put rod in here and I will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that... It is going to be okay. So here we go. Now what I'm hoping is, yeah, I can feel it. The excess glue is actually going up inside the tube. So it might even go top. I don't know. <coughs> Another paddle pop stick. Here we go. Oh, that's interesting. Very interesting. I thought it was going to go even deeper than that. That's what I measured it. It should go deeper than that. Oh, hang on, where's that? <coughs> Where is it? No, it can't go any further than that. So, I must have cut this wrongly. No, that's bottomed out. At least I know it's a good friction fit. Okay. I'll just see if it's a bit up the middle, but not much. Okay. Can't find. That pencil mark I'll just put on it. Here we go. Where is it? There we go. I'm not going to see if I can see the pencil mark, but I can't. I'll do it this way then. No, I won't. I'll do it this way. Warm one way to skin a cat. Stand to there. Pull that out. Hold that there to there, and that's there. All right. So I'll cut that off. I think I 
some better. I said, I'm going to put it in there because I'll put it in rag and put it in. So if I put the glue in there, then it's going to um, stick to my vice. I don't really want. Okay. There we go. We'll try again. I'll put another knife on it. I've covered up. I've covered up the chat. All safe. I'm up to the end part, just waxing and doing final set. Good on you. You going to post a photo of it, Vince, or what? Give another big splodge of this. All right. Here we go. Oh, you mutt. There we go. Lovely. When that's dry, what I will do is sand it and then I can veneer over the top. And believe me, that is a lot lighter than the great big lump of steel I stuck in the other one. Where are we? To? Just, uh, just one more cut, yeah, it's, it's, it's in the. <laughs> I think you mean Dow's, don't you, Trev? <clears throat> G'day, Bob. Rar IP, Mr. G. Yeah, I did the right thing. I put him in a chicken feed bag. And so I thought, well, there's going to be chicken. But he's good. It's funny, you know, sometimes I lose it. And one of the other chickens is walking as if she's lost or something. Um, and then they're right after a couple of days. But no, no one this one, which was sad because she's one of my favourites. Oh, what have we got? Panda, g'day, mate. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm waiting for it. I'm looking forward to hitting 100,000. It will be a perfect, a perfect, a personal achievement. I've finally done something. Hey James, oh, all right, now, I'll mix up another batch and we'll do t'other one, wherever it is, over here. Oh dear. So I don't know how long it's going to take for me to get the other um, Well, that's interesting. Obviously, I got it mixed up. The one that I had before should have been this one. Anyway, doesn't matter. It's all good. Uh, perhaps I could stick. Where's that bit that I cut off? Trev, I'll, st I'll stick it on. Oh, there you go. But I was going to say something then, and I've forgotten. Oh, isn't it great? But up Okay, well, let me have a look. See. There. Oh, it's only an inch or so. Oh, might as well cut a day. Here you go, a little bit. That's the other advantage of um, 
using a hacksaw to cut this stuff, you haven't got the dust floating around anywhere because it's rather, rather nasty stuff to breathe in. I don't know, I, I would imagine it'd be like asbestos. Not good for the lungs. There ah, we go. Now, if I put that on the end of there, like that, stick that down there like that, pull that up, go like that. That will do. That will do. Okay. Well, I put the here we go. Make a bit more of this up. Good day, John. Earl snuck in there. James said good day to Trevor. What did you say you shouldn't have said? Okay, I'm thinking that much of that. Now, what I've done, I've actually spread that onto some of the other parts. So. I'll get a brand new one and put it in there because if you do mix the two parts together and put them together, the whole lot won't go off, but you will contaminate some of it. Same thing with this. I'll put a, a new stick in here. That can go in there, get a new stick. They cost nothing. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something about the carbon rods. Oh, yeah, I don't, don't know when I'm going to get those. So we'll just have to wait and see. Yuck. It's a bit here you go. <whistles> bowls! Bowls! <laughs> I thought you meant dowels. See, we were both. <laughs> Both wrong. Socks. <laughs> I reckon the only reason Trevor would have socks in the workshop is to use for applying wax on the jobs. Actually, I've got a bit of turning to do today. I've got a couple of things to finish off, and I was talking about making a. Um, uh, a steam bender so I'm going to I'll actually video that and I, it's not the sort of thing I can do live because I haven't got I used to be able to stream from up there but it's just getting too complicated now with all the machines and that that I have up there but there will be a video put up of me making a very simple yeah, steam bending set up. Uh, those of you who have seen the water pipe that I use in the vise, that's terrific and it works really, really well. But I was finding for what I actually want to steam bend, it didn't quite give me the heat that I needed to get the bend. I was getting about oh, 80% done and then it was breaking so I thought that the only way I've got to do it is really let it steam for half an hour or something and give it a go. This epoxy I'm using if you're in Australia is Bodacoat. I get it from Bodacoat there on the Gold Coast in Queensland and that big jar that I've got I think is $70 or $75, something like that. It's not that expensive. But it's good stuff. All right, here we go. Put that little bit in there first. Now, push this bit down. and get it all the way down. Oh, went in. No, hang on. Oh, actually, that, this might do the trick, eh? It's 
Good to get another quarter of an inch. Beautiful. Tell you what, after a week of failures, I'm having a good trot today. Um, this veneer I'm most likely going to have to take off and re-veneer it. So I don't care if it's a bit ugly. It'll look okay. Now I've gone through a bridge pin there. Mm, okay, we'll work that out. We can work that out. Oh, let me get a hand cleaner. Now, now's the time when you, I reckon, you should have all your little glue up jobs, your fiddly little ones that you don't want to mix up glue to do because it's too fiddly. If you've got them all sitting by the side when you've got leftover glue like I have here, you can utilise it, but I don't, I don't think I've got any little jobs around here that I have to glue up. Let me see, I will see. I'm just going outside to wash that under the tap and then I'll be back and we'll do some brass work. Oh, oh. oh dear. Oh, good on you. Just what you need sitting next to the tap. A big sheet of MDF. I'll go, I'll go back out later on. I'll have two sheets then. Oh, okay, that's better. Oh, dear. <laughs> James. Selling in my garage blue in a while ago. I had to move everything out to get it fixed. Just started moving everything back. My bench is carried covered with tools that I took ready. <laughs> oh, well, that's a good problem to have. Oh, look, I'm the same. I, I don't know where I'm going to stick half of my stuff. Susie's the same. She goes and buys all this fabric and then goes, well, oh, where am I going to put it? Well, who knows? Uh, Trevor, you'll be pleased to know I'm not. <laughs> uh, I couldn't wear work boots unless I had socks underneath them. Okay, now I'll leave that just in case I do find something I can glue up. At the moment, I think I'm pretty right. I'm just going to take an extra little bit off of that. That's looking. It's looking okay. All right. Um, now I've got blinking glue on me again. Good on you. What'll we do? We might do some brass work. I've got some fractured burning to do in a minute. No, I might get it out of the way. I might do that first. Where's, where do I put it? Here we go. La -da -di 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 -da -da. <laughs> there you, you take a note of this, John. I'm putting everything away. Oh, no, Nathaniel, Nathaniel. Oh, dear. It won't last for long. It's not that I'm messy. I know I agree. It's just I've got so many things I've got to do. Cleaning up isn't part of it. All right. Got to do that in a little bit. That, that, oh, we'll do a bit of fractal. There you go. Here we go. Just a quick. I, um, those of you that have seen the lightning harp 
I'm just making a for it, or not a stand, a support that I don't have to rest it on my knee, I can just have it sitting there. So, oh, what are we on? What camera? Boop, 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 boop. Let me let me bring this one down. And where's the, I did that one last night. Don't need that on. That one last night. So I've just got to do this base to match. And then start doing some brass work. Now I will add this machine that I'm using has been made by a professional electrical engineer and it is safe. I do not recommend you trying to make one yourself or buying a bodgy one because it will kill you. Whereas this one, as I said, it works on milliamps and uh, it's okay oh where are we no, yeah, there we go It won't work on dry timber and it won't work on really wet timber. You have to just sort of judge it for yourself to get the right moisture content. I find um, if I give it a spray and a wipe off, that seems to give me enough electrolyte for the current to, to flow through. Doesn't need to have a lot on there, just you don't actually see this bit um, hidden underneath the harp, but if it's not under the harp, people can see it. I 
It was funny, when I first saw this, I fell in love with it. And then I sort of went off it and I thought, no, I don't like it. And now I'm back with it. I do enjoy it if it's done tastefully, I think. Uh, we might put a bit there. There you go. That will do. goes in there like that and then there's an adjustable foot that goes in there that can go up and down that I've got to go up to the lathe and put some grooves in for some rubber stops. Okay let's do some brass work now. We'll go over to the lathe. That lathe nothing the small router and for that I'm going to put my eye muffs on because there's going to be bits of metal flying around um, let's see if I can find it here we go I had it I did, there it is. Okay. So what I want to do is flush this bit of brass down flush with this bit of timber on both sides. So I've got a profile follower on that little router there. So we'll go over there and do that. Make sure you're wearing adequate eye and ear protection and be careful. Do it in a lot of small cuts. Don't try and do it in one hit. goggles on and what I'm also finding is oh as it's going over the router if I'm taking too big a bite I'm getting swarf coming up over this side like a burr and that's often from running smoothly so I've got a file and I'm just gonna take those off to go this way and then I'll find that it will run smoother on the router. Okay, back over to the router. coming up. Knock it off. That's a 
push that up. I'm not going to rub my finger up there because it's got sharp edges on it. Oh, so, yeah, I'll file this down. Put this away. Oh, put this away. Put this away. Turn that off. Ah. See you, Trev. It's always a good thing if I can find any. There we go. When you're doing any filing, let's get a bit of chalk. And just put it down the file face. It stops the land from up with um, metal and helps it cut longer. James, I've never seen metal work done with woodwork and tools. I suppose, but was, yeah, look, it is. When you're using um, tungsten carbide router cutters, so yeah, why not? It works. Basically, I suppose it's made out of the same stuff as mill cutters are made out of. Why not? Yeah, but before I got a, a metal lathe, I tried um, turning brass using a, a woodworking skew. I did it, but it's not something I'm going to do twice. Okay, I'm just trying to get this edge off. It's got to be nice and soft. Now by soft, I don't mean soft as in Soft, but soft as in not sharp edges. Uh, I'd like to be using emery cloth. I'm not. This is cloth sanding paper off a, a wide bed sander or drum sander. That's nice. And once I've got 
that done, then I'll do it with um, wet and dry to get it soft. And then I've got to drill the holes here. And you can see I, I botched it once, so I had to re drill them. Uh, metal it. And then this afternoon, I've got a little bit more work to do. And then this afternoon, I've got to go up to the forge and make what they call brass horseshoes, which are these here. Oh, I've seen several ways that people have made them. As, as always, it's nice to come up with your own way. Find them. There we go. <clears throat> uh, these, the the string holes there, and then they actually break the the string, so that gives you your tension. Um, the ones I'm going to be making are well, similar to that one there. Only I'll only have one nail hole. So, yeah, a bit more like that, maybe. So, that's the one that's on the Trinity harp or the Bower harp. Oh! Tell you what. Ow! I'm, I'm just loving working with timber and brass. I think mean, a great combination. And I'm sure in the old, olden times, um, that's what they used to use. There's a, a lot of black steel in timber and there's a lot of brass in timber. You gotta be careful rubbing your hand down metal because if it's got shards and wood splinters are bad enough, but metal splinters are even worse. That's pretty nice. It's got a lump of dag at the end. There to knock off. That's now looking quite presentable. Um, see if I can give you an idea of what it's meant to all look like. Oh, here's the sound box. Okay. So this. Goes on to there like that. This goes in there. Oh! Yeah, I've got to pull that back a bit. I've got to cut some of the brass off because it's impinging on the tenon. Well, that's okay. I can do that in a bit. And then, 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 then.
That goes on there, what like there. That goes in there. That'll go in there. And then I've got to cut these out. And they will go in there. Way, and it'll look even so then I can turn it around. No, nah, put in this side. And um, then this bit will fit over the top there like that. And if it doesn't all fall from together when I pick it up, that's what I'm sort of looking for. So hopefully by the end of next week this one will be finished as well. What I'll do now is cut two more of these cheek bands because I messed that one up. So I might get some brass over here and we'll do that. And then I reckon that will be a good time for me to go and have some lunch. Been a pretty good run. Okay, got a nice lot of stuff done. Of course, it's the company I have while I'm doing it that makes it easy. What, what have we got? How's Sue doing? John, she's doing well, mate. She's up in her workshop. Thank you for asking. I will pass your um, inquiry up to her. She's, in the moment, I think she's doing a seascape, which is gorgeous. It's got all these cartoon-type characters. There's whales. Um, hermit crabs, sharks, fish, prawn, jellyfish, starfish uh, for a quilt. And she's just finished making um, our godson is about to have his first um, child, which is a little boy. And uh, she was talking to his mum the other day and said, would, she, would they like a, a cock quilt? But they wouldn't know what they wanted. So... Sue being Sue, she made eight of them, all different ones, and then sent them down photos and said, which one do you like? And they picked one. So she's doing that. But no, she's good. Uh, is it me? I'm getting buffeted. Yeah, no, it's, it's crap. Buffeting, mate. There's nothing I can do about it. Uh, okay. Well, let's just get a little bit of brass and we'll cut these things out and that will be it I'm running low on shim brass still I'm going to have to oh, buy another sheet soon this is getting a bit low let's see how we go how low can you go oops ba bum the way I, I cut this stuff up is um, full sided tape. This is a Perspex jig, but template, but you could use um, timber. It the reason I like Perspex ones is when I'm placing it on the finished article I'm making it for, I can line it up a lot better than guessing. I do have a timber one somewhere or other, but this will do. There we go. Nice. Try not to waste too much of the brass. It gets a little bit expensive, but um, what I do with the, the offcut bits is I can melt them down, and that's what I make those shields with that I put on the sides of the harps. So this is just a hardened pin in this brad all.
and I'll cut this out with a jigsaw. And providing I um, keep this line on the inside of what I'm cutting out, I don't seem to waste too much. So with this one here, what I can do is I'll cut between these two. And when, when you're cutting meat, if you've got a oscillating scroll saw, I used to cut these out in the bandsaw. I was wrecking too many bandsaw blades and making such a mess. So I use a jigsaw. But if you have an oscillating jigsaw like most of them are now where it actually clears as it cuts, have it on straight up and down. That way you don't make such a mess with brass flying everywhere. Again, I highly recommend your goggles on. And we'll see how we go doing this. No, you're right, John. It is cleaner. Took me, took me three days, mate. Three days, but I got there. Okay. I've been trying to drink this coffee. Since 10 past 10. Okay, so I've got a hacksaw blade in there. And instead of the blade oscillating, it's just going straight up and down. It'll give you a much cleaner cut. Support it as much as you can. So instead of cutting this out, I'm going to cut this one out. Then I'm cutting this one out because it, I've got more support behind me there. We'll just move up a little bit so you can... Maybe see a bit better. And here we go. Oh, don't forget your eye protection and ear protection, especially with brass. Metal's good too, but you get a bit of metal in your eye. They can generally get it out with a magnet. If it's brass, they can't. I remember, yeah, gr gross warning. I remember um, years ago when I was doing my trade mechanic in the army, we had to watch all these gruesome films to scare us into wearing safety equipment. We're talking mid-70s here, okay? So it wasn't, no one gave us stuff in those days. Um, but yeah, we had to watch this guy getting a piece of brass wharf out of his eyeball and it was all close up in colour. Oh, gross. I can hear that, feel that, that's hitting my face like you wouldn't believe. And if you're doing that and you're holding it like this, make sure your finger's not anywhere near the blade or it will cut you. I know this sounds obvious. went in the mouth it was hot okay no, that's not too bad that one ooh, don't know that one's right on the line might have muffed it That's all right. We'll be okay.
Easy that cuts when it's on, on just straight up and down. I'm not going to put it on oscillating because it, it just jumps around. And So, oh, that's it. And all I'll do is um, exactly what I did before. Put that on there, go over and cut it on the router to get the shape that I want. And you've already seen me do it once. I'm sure you don't want to see it do it again. And that is that. So all in all, what a productive stream. I don't know about from your point of view, but definitely from my point of view, I've got so many jobs done. I'm going to might take a rest and go and watch a bit of that, um, uh, whatever I said it was, was it? Poker face. Poker face. That's it. Oh, dear. Put this in there. Can't think of anything else I can use that glue on, so that's just going to have to go to ours. I think the success of the day for me is getting this one done. I said, yeah, you can tell I had a little bit of a, an injury, but what I'll do, I'll put that up later on with a bit of veneer or something so it won't look as obvious. <sighs> but that is it. Ooh. So I've been going for about an hour and three quarters, and um, I reckon that's about it for me. Thank you for everyone that jumped in and said good day. Your first time, as if you're new, please hit the subscribe button. Um, possibly won't do anything for you, but it makes me feel good. And the bell, so you know what I'm on. And you can ring me up and let me know that I'm streaming, because half the time I don't know what I'm doing. Um, that was it. So we covered a bit of stuff today, actually. But ostensibly, it was... This week, a lot of things got broken and they didn't work out. But I'm hoping, as I do whenever I stream, it's, I, I'm not interested in showing you if I'm clever or not because I don't think I'm particularly clever at all. But what I do like to share is the fact that I've done something and it's broken or it didn't work out or, uh, uh, you know, things just went wrong. And you don't have to get frustrated. You don't have to chop it up, throw it away. There are things you can do to fix it. You just be patient. If you're in that frame of mind where you don't want to fix it, fine. Put it away. Six months' time, come back and fix it. Amazing what you can learn. And the whole progression of, of woodwork or metalwork or stamp collecting or knitting, it doesn't matter. It's all about experience and what you learn from the experience and how you can build on that and what you can do differently. Maybe what you can do better or um, you understand why something didn't work. Uh, the, as I said, the, the um, must be getting tired. The steam bed that I'm making, I've got a concept in my mind and I'm going to have a crack at it. Um, so I'll video that and post that possibly next week sometime. If it works out, if it doesn't work out, I'll tell you about it and I'll have another crack. But I want to do it on a real 
that. It's not because I'm tired or I'm a miser or anything like that, but I love using what I've already got. If I can adapt it, convert it, um, uh, adjust it and make it something that I'm, I'm not using anymore, but I can use and uh, repurpose. That's the word I'm looking for, repurposing. And what I want to do, I've had some, um, I made a, oh, it's going to be a pressure chamber uh, that I no longer am pursuing because I've got a pressure pot to do what I wanted to do. So I'm converting that into the steam tank. Uh, for the steam source, I'm using a very, very, very old glue pot, an electric glue pot that I bought maybe 20 years ago and that I no longer use because I use these glue pots and some PVC piping I've got lying around the yard and a bit of old timber, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So what is it? I forget, there's, there's some core. Is it the Marine Corps? I'm not sure, but one of them's got a, um, a motto, if something goes wrong, it's um, adjust, improvise, continue, something like that. And not a bad, not a bad motto in the workshop, any in Anyway, they're like, that's it, I'm starting to ramble. This is Steve pulling the schedule down soon. And remember to keep it sharp. But more importantly, keep it safe, look after yourself, be kind to each other. And I look forward to having your company at the workbench and workshop very, very soon. Till then, stay active, stay creative, and just enjoy life. I, I could go down that track, but I'm not going to. Just enjoy life because you, you don't know how long it's going to be. Um, that's it. God bless. Catch you all later on. Bye for now.